G'day Ziggy D here and welcome back for the day 3 guide for my beginner's arc witch 7 day project. In this video I want to go over getting geared to begin end game. Since this is a very beginner's focused guide I didn't want to just give you guys the, the final build guide where I'm using like all the fancy end game uniques and stuff that you can get later on. That's, that's end game scaling essentially. There's kind of two gear sets you get on a character. Well, three if you include your leveling gear. And there's your leveling gear there's your getting into endgame gear, which is usually your cheap stepping stone set. And then there are there is your final like endgame goal set and maybe some extra improvements on top of that. In this video I'm going to focus on that stepping stone set, how to build it, what to look for, and stuff like that. Uh, this is all pretty, pretty cheap gear. The idea is that you guys will be able to build this set just with the stuff you find and with the stuff you purchase from sales you make while leveling over the first couple days. And uh, that, that's exactly what's happened here. All this stuff has either been found, crafted, or purchased with currency found from trading over the past two days, selling things like skill gems and random rares and stuff like that for a couple chaos each, as highlighted in the last video, which I'll link to in the description below, and it's all in the spreadsheet you can check out there as well. So let's go over, uh, first off, starting with the weapon. Now, at my current point, I'm still using a plus one or a plus two lightning gems weapon. Now, I actually bought this one for a couple of chaos. It was plus two level of lightning gems with 15% increased cast speed. Now, if you have one of these, or if you still want to use your plus one level of lightning gems wand with some cast speed or spell damage on it, then that's, uh, that's a pretty good spot to begin with. Uh, essentially, you, if you're using this setup, you're using Arc on a 3-link in your actual weapon. So this is pref preferably a Scepter, though Wands work okay. Scepters are better because Wands give 12% increased spell damage, whereas Scepters can give up to 20% increased elemental damage, which is just 8% more. So Scepters are generally better. Uh, however, I just happened to get a Wand on this one. So basically, this increases the levels of Arc, which is... Uh, scales your base damage by quite a bit. That's pretty much the only real reason to do it and uh, depending on the level of your arc it can also even give you an additional chain so it's very effective. Uh, essentially I'm using Spell Echo with uh, Lightning Penetration on this 3-link setup and I have done some 66 maps. I've farmed Piety, I've farmed Lunaris, I've farmed Dox and it works really well. Single target damage is a little bit lacking but this is uh, to be expected from running a 3-link spell at endgame. So this is a very cheap budget way to get away. I spent ex I spent exactly 3 chaos on this one just here and the other plus 1 Lightning ones are almost as good, not quite as good, but almost as good and they cost about an alteration uh, as you guys will see in that first day video, the leveling video. So this is this is option one for weapons. Option two is something like Moon Sorrow. Moon Sorrow is a is a unique. It's a nice stepping stone unique. It really it's really well suited for this build. We have spell damage on the implicit. We have spell damage roll on it, and then we have increased lightning damage. So that all three of those things stack together, you get something like seventy to eighty to ninety percent total damage increase on your on your arc, and then you get ten percent cast speed. So this works really well for a, an arc build. However, early on in the leagues, they can be a bit overpriced, especially with the hype surrounding arc builds at the moment. Um, I, uh, I don't recommend paying more than like 8 Chaos in the first few days for something like this. Anything more than that's kind of a ripoff considering that you can get, uh, you can craft something very similar to it without paying that much, without with paying a lot less basically. But uh, if you can pick up one of these for 2 Chaos later on in the leagues, then this is a great stepping stone you need to use. It's just high damage. Now if you're using this setup, you don't, you don't, you're not using a 3 link anymore. So what happens if I switch this out to here, I'm instead going to be using a 4 link, so hopefully I have like 4 link helmet or gloves or something like that, and I'll be using Arc, uh, Echo, Lightning Penetration, and then either Added Lightning, uh, uh, probably the Added Lightning I've been leveling with, and then maybe eventually uh, empower once I switch into Joffrey's Crest and stuff like that. So you can see the uh, you can see the sort of the transitions there. But essentially, using a four link if you're using a spell damage orientation orientated weapon. So that's that's the second option. The third option is if Moon Sorrows are wildly overpriced, which they are currently. Uh, they they go for like you know ten to twenty chaos at the moment. Um, then you want to craft something like this. Essentially, there is a there is a spell damage recipe. You guys have probably seen the fizz damage rep recipe. This is also a spell damage recipe. I uh, crafted this. It cost all of uh, one blacksmith whetstone essentially, <laughs> and uh, essentially all you do is take any scepter. It doesn't really matter. And then you take a rare chain belt, so this can be any level of chain belt as well. The scepter you want to keep to your close to your level as much as possible, and you want to get a base that has 20% increased elemental damage. So this crystal scepter base just here has the 20% increased elemental damage, and this is a good starting end game one to get. So uh, essentially, we're going to take this. We're going to take a rare belt. As I said, it can be any level. So if you just find something that's otherwise junk, like this one just here, you can take this to the vendor, 
and trade the rare belt with the blacksmith whetstone with any scepter. It doesn't have to be any particular rarity. And then you get a spell damage one back. This is 31% spell damage. Last on the last one we got 37, so 31 is a bit low. But uh, what happens is I can I can accept this here, and then uh, this is 31%, and then I can augment it. Now we've got five life gained on kill for each enemy attacks. This is pretty average. So what I can do, do then is just re-roll it. I can just trade it with another crappy belt back again. This time we get 35% spell damage, so that's a bit better. And let's see what we get on the augmentation. Oh, car speed, that's exceptional, that's really good. That's actually better than this one, because this one got 6% lightning damage, whereas this one got 17% car speed. Now, let's let's look at this compared to Moonsaur. The uh, the 20, 10 to 20 Chaos Moonsaur compared to the uh, the one, you know, the some crappy some crappy items that we're just going to vendor anyway, and then a, a, a Blacksmith Whetstone. Uh, we got 30, so it's 55 total spell damage, because the elemental damage adds on top of that, so 55 and 17% cast speed. This has 10% cast speed, and then 17 plus 32 is 39, 49, and then 25 extra lightning on top of that. So that's, uh, my math is pretty bad, 54, 74. So 74 compared to 55, that's a little bit more, obviously. And then, uh, actually less cast speed than the one we just rolled here. So, uh, for... Less than an ALK, we uh, essentially made this one here. An ALK, if you go about ALKing your own chain belts, if you do that, if you do that route, you can do that route. Uh, compared to like a 1020 chaos, so <laughs> it's uh, sure you lose a little bit of damage, but that, that's like so economical. So this is how you craft your endgame weapon. Don't get ripped off buying something like a very expensive moon, sorry, when you can craft something like that so very cheaply. Know these vendor recipes because they're exceptionally helpful. So that's that's like the the biggest thing. Everything else is pretty straightforward, honestly. Uh, every, every we're, we're prioritizing armor ES gear as much as possible. Add us an Eldritch Battery character. The bit of the bit of ES you get, so like the hundred energy shield here, gives you a lot of mana. And then uh, you really want to get as much armor as you can. So going armor ES gives you that nice balance. Trying to avoid evasion if you can, so this, this character doesn't have iron reflexes. And uh, it, some ES gear is okay. Just getting like a little bit of ES gear here and there is okay. Especially if you can pick up like a shield like this, you know, with some nice resistances and spell damage on it, then that's fine to run. You know, you, this is 49% extra spell damage, so I'm happy to lose a little bit of armor to gain like that much extra damage, and this also helped sort out my resistances. But uh, this doesn't have life, so it's obviously not optimal. This is all just stepping stone stuff. I managed to uh, pick up this chest here for a couple chaos. Uh, you know, that's got life and a couple resistances, but it's not a five link or anything, so it's reasonably cheap. So this is that's a that's an example of a pretty decent stepping stone item, and you can use that until you get something like Cloak of Defiance. Uh, belts, you know, life and resistances. Keep in mind that strength gives you extra life, so this is actually a pretty high life belt. Uh, we've got something like life, resistances, and a little bit of move speed. It's handy. This is actually one I found myself. Obviously, armor evasion is not the best base, but because it has good stats, we can rock it. But uh, armor and resists again. Oh, sorry, life and resists again. And you know, the best armor from there is pretty nice. It's all pretty pretty straightforward. So I'm just trying to balance out my resistances. So I I bought, I purchased a couple of items with life and a good resist or two good resists. And then uh, I was essentially able to fill in the gap. So I tried to do that. I pick up, picked up these gloves. This had, you know, life and two decent resists. And then I was able to sort of fill in the gaps by picking up something like this one that has two cold resist rolls and a little bit of life, you know, to sort of fill in those gaps and get all those resistances overcapped. I even, uh, I had such a crappy amulet before that I was able to upgrade with an Araku Tiki. So this is just life and fire resist. You gotta, you gotta do what you gotta do. But this is, as you can see, super budget. And then here's the, here's the pinnacle of my gearing budgetness is uh, my blue helmet that I crafted myself. I found a four link in the vendor, had the right colors I needed to uh, set up my, my spell totem setup. So I've got arc spell totem, faster casting and elemental proliferation. And I was just like, I uh, transmuted it, you know, alterated a couple times till I got life. Uh, augmented for chaos, for cold damage. It all up less than like less than an arc worth of currency. So uh, that's that's my super budget gearing there. Just doing that for the cheapo falling. But it's life and a resist. Life and a resist. Even blues. Even if this was a blue with just life and life and all resist, that's fine. Like the accuracy in life regen means nothing. So that could be a blue. It wouldn't make any difference. This could pretty much be a blue too. If it had like 40 life and you know a bit of extra cold resist on it, that's pretty much that's pretty much a blue. This is pretty much a blue. Life and a resist. Don't underestimate the power of blues, like, you know, just those magic items. You don't need to go for rares, just look for life and resistances for your stepping stone gear. That's really all you need. And then armor ES bases, and that's pretty much covers it. Uh, for the uh, flask, you want to get these guys set up pretty good. My flasks are not finalized because I haven't uh, found enough glass blowers baubles yet. Essentially what you'll do is you'll, you'll try and finish your most important flask first, which I think the granite is the most important one first. 
So you want a 20 quality of white granite and then try and roll perpetual of iron skin, that is the best. I got really lucky on this and I think I rolled it on like my first go or something. But uh, I got the 99% uh, armor and 36% charge recovery, which is fantastic. But you want to try and r roll some sort of perpetual of iron skin, even if it's bad rolls, it's still pretty good. Uh, Quicksilver, you'll want a quality up and get Quicksilver, over, you'll probably want a Perpetual of Adrenaline is the best. This is just a one I'm using temporarily until I can quality one. So what I'll do is I'll just, uh, I'll find a white one eventually and then quality it up rather than using a scouring on this. Uh, this, uh, I recommend using a Sanctified Flask as one of your flasks, and Sapping is the awesome prefix. This is just one that I happen to found, but I will craft one like this later. You probably want Dispels Bleeding though on this one, I reckon. Or uh, some other... Dispels Bleeding is probably the best one to go. The reason you go Sapping is it increases your life recovered by a huge amount. So this is 1200 life over 3 seconds, which is super powerful. Like this this will make you uber tanky whenever you're under the effect of this. So 3 seconds of uber tankiness and you can use it twice. And uh, essentially, uh, you remove 10% of your life recovered, so 10% of 1200, so 120, from mana. But because we have so much mana regen on this character, like 150 something, because it's an Elder, Eldritch Battery character, uh, sapping doesn't matter. Sapping's a really good affix to get on a Sanctified Life Flask. Your other Life Flask will probably want to be a Seething. This is a Bubbling, which is kind of like a, an okayish one, but I recommend going for a Seething. And then Seething of Grounding is usually pretty good, obviously qualityed, but you want to do that on a Hallowed Life Flask base because that gives you a larger amount of instant heal whereas sanctified is a poor base for seething so so seething hallowed and then sapping sanctified are the best ones to roll for then you want to get bleed removal and uh dispels shocked and then the topaz i think uh perpetual of uh warding curse removal is the best one to get it gives you 4.2 seconds of curse immunity synergizes as well with removing things like conductivity if you prevent you from getting shocked and essentially we use this uh for reflect packs uh, or uh, against nasty lightning storm mobs and stuff like that, which there's a lot of these uh, when you're fighting invasion bosses and stuff like that. So guys, hopefully this has been helpful. It sort of shows you just, it's actually quite easy to get a gear set up like this and get it for end game, and it does work really effectively. So if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. That's it for now. I'm Ziggy D, and thanks for watching.